What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of She Social Podcast with myself, Ms. Cosmo. Thank you so much for joining me again for another week of really awesome conversations with really powerful women in the entertainment industry in South Africa. So today I've got two awesome ladies who I'm going to be chatting to. I've got DJ Adila, who's going to be chatting to me in a moment. And of course, a little bit later, I will be hanging out with Kim Jade right here on the She Social Podcast. So we're going to get straight into our first conversation for the day. Of course, keep on uh, showing me your likes and of course commenting as well and let us just know how you're feeling about the conversation and get involved with that let's get straight into the first chat for today adila how are you doll i'm good how are you what's that i've never thought of a color link i'm calling miss cosmo what's wrong with you there's a first time for everything, baby girl. There's a first time for it all. There really <laughs> is. There really is. How are you doing? How are you surviving? How's lockdown treating you? I mean, it's level two now, so maybe we're feeling like we can shake it up just a little bit. How? <sighs> My How's gosh. the past five months been treating you as a DJ and as a person? I want to be honest. So as a person, it's been very relaxed because I've gotten to know myself a lot more. Like, um, it gave me the time that I needed to just find out who I am and what it is that I want for my life. And I think it was very impactful for my career because just that time that I was chilling at home and listening to music, not even digging for music, just like listening, vibing, it really helped me to like hone and understand my sound and just figure out like what it is that I want to play and what I want people to hear from me. But professionally, sorry, my screen is moving. Professionally, it's just been, woo, no, it's been a bad time. I don't want to lie. It's been a bad time. Um, like, luckily, it's just been God's grace that I've been able to do a few things here and there within this period. And now, level two, it's like we're back in the full swing of things. You know, it's just hectic. Like, yeah. it's hectic because now you've been chilling this whole time <laughs> and you're back to, like, running around Joburg like a crazy person. So, um, I think just readjusting is hectic. But I, all in all, for me, you know, it's been a beautiful experience. That's so awesome, man. I like that you are taking the time to kind of reflect and sit back and say, look, this is a new me. I'm going to look at things a little bit differently. I'm going to use the time um, in a great way. So not necessarily all doom and gloom, because I think everybody, when they yeah. think lockdown, they think, oh my gosh, the world is over. Oh no, I won't be able to continue. Where does my life go from here? So at least you've been able to kind of use the time to reflect and say, look, this is where I stand as a person and this is how I'm going to take myself forward, which is great. Um, mm. Just for those people who don't necessarily know who DJ Adila is. Can you give us just a brief background with what you want us to know about you as a DJ? Definitely, definitely. So um, about myself as a DJ, I moved to Joburg. So I'm not from Joburg originally. I moved to Joburg, started my career. It's been five years. Started my career in Bloom five years ago, but I was playing uh, virtual DJ. Um, literally, I was a software DJ. Um, I apologize. There's just something ringing there's a phone there in the back <laughs> but i'm um, literally <laughs> um it was just it was it was it was yo i don't know how to explain it but it was it was it's been a journey it's been a journey i think that's the best thing i can say yeah. but a dealer as a person is very pro women pro um philanthropy just i want to make change yeah. i want to make change just beyond myself yes why did you make the big jump to move to johannesburg why did you feel that that was necessary for you to kind of get yourself to where you needed to be as a dj you know, Noni, like growing up in a small town, you know that like there's certain spaces that are for you and you know that there, there's certain spaces that aren't for you. So when I was in Bloom, I had to commercialize, ooh, commercial, ooh, so hoa. <laughs> I had to commercialize my sound quite a bit because there was no room for that kind of sound in Bloom, unfortunately. And I knew, I didn't even know a lot, but I knew that there were places like Book Kitcheners and stuff in Joburg where I could come through and then I knew that there'd be like a, target market for my sound at that time so those were some of the things and then Lahape because I liked things you know I wanted to go to UJ and get a degree in Joburg and just you know I had to explain to the parents why I wanted to be here so I was like guys let listen I'm gonna do two things at the same time you know I'm gonna Thank come you. to school get a degree and DJ and how did they feel about that conversation because most parents especially black parents are just like hey 
don't go into the arts. Hey, that's not where you're going to make money. You need to focus. You need to go to school. You must become a doctor. That's the only way you're going to survive in the world. It was so hectic because my mom was like to me, Mwanaka, like, Mtotanazabu DJ. She loves to call them Mtotanazabu DJ. Mtotanazabu DJ. Yeah, do see so but you need a plan A. Like, get a plan A. And that's honestly been some significant advice that she's given me because now as I'm still finding myself, I mean, I'm able to get a job because of it, you know, and it doesn't take from my passion or anything. I think it was some solid, solid advice that she gave me. Finish my degree and then we can pursue the DJing things. It's just like, I've always just been a driven person. So I did both at the same time and I did both really well. I'd like to think, you know, so that proved it to her. Jorge. Actually, you know what? Um, you can actually do both things at the same time. If you have a good head on your shoulders and you know where your priorities lie. Cause I mean, I'd never groove on a weekend knowing that um, I had a test on exam the following day, you know? So it was just about selecting how to do what and when. So um, it does take a lot of discipline for you to kind of juggle two things at once. I mean, obviously having the discipline for school, knowing when not to go out and being able to prioritize mm. school, but also still then saying, I need to push myself because this is what my passion is. This is where my heart lies and I want to be able to still go for it. Um, and it's mm. great that you've also just kind of learned how to kind of balance it out and see how you take things to the next level. But um, as a DJ, I think a lot of people also kind of focus on, on a specific genre as to which direction they want to take when it comes to their music. But you've kind of decided, you know what, you're rather going to be a little bit more open format and play a little bit of everything. What yes. was about the music that you've chosen to, to play? Because, I mean, you play funky beats, a little bit of electro here and there, and you also mix it up with a bit of hip hop. Um, why did you want to rather go the external route and not necessarily follow in the same pattern of I'm just a house DJ or I'm a piano DJ or I'm a hip hop DJ and that's that. You know, I think because um, it's been so difficult to find space for the sound that like I really, really am tuned into. I had to, like I said, when I was still in Bloom, I had to commercialize really quick. They were like, baby girl, we hear these songs of yours, but we, we need something that people can vibe to, you know? And that taught me how to be, even before it gets about it, like an open format DJ type of vibe, but that taught me how to like just diversify in terms of my sound. And it's something that I've kept because you know, because yeah. now, I mean, you invited me to the trap house and I could come through, yeah. right? Yeah. If I didn't have that um, happening for me, then I, I, I unfortunately would have said, Miss Cosmo, thank you for the opportunity, but I can't meet this brief and there's, a, there's an opportunity gone, you yeah. know? Yeah. And for me, like, I, I really, like, lost opportunities haunt me like nothing. <laughs> you know, that's how I feel about lost opportunities. It's like that one shoe I saw at, the, at like, the other day at that other store, and I never bought it. And then, like, it haunts me until, 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 right? So I was just like, no, I really need to learn. And, you know, because I... I don't play things that I don't think I can play, if I can put it like that. Mm -hmm. So I'll never mess around with a genre that I can't play. Then I'll tell you straight up, I'll be like, no, like I, unfortunately I can't meet this brief, yeah. you know? And I've just been very blessed to have like a diverse background as well in my DJ because I literally skipped from hip hop and I went to like a breed between hip hop and house and I went to house. So, you know, it's, it's just been very like, I think things worked out for the better because yeah. now like my primary sound is like I said, a cross between those two genres, yeah. you know? So it, it opens me up to playing those two genres as well individually. That's so dope. I like that, that uh, example you've given about losing opportunities. And I think everybody knows that feeling when you're so frustrated, mm. you're like, okay, I planned, I'm going to go and buy that shoe at the end of the month. And then you get there and then you don't have a size or it's sold out. And you're just like, oh, after I've been dreaming about it for so long. So lost opportunities are definitely something that we need to um, understand in the arts. And we also need to understand that we need to go for opportunities as they, as they present themselves, because then you don't want to be in a position where you are regretting it because you could have um, achieved something that you've now um, ended up losing out on. So I like that you, you know, you're kind of thinking outside the box and you're trying to see how far you can kind of take things for yourself. You are also very um, passionate about philanthropy and you've always wanted to kind of make a change in certain things. 
how dedicated or what is the direction rather let me say that you want to take your 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 work with regards to the art space as well as within music and and women in general you know for me um so the end goal isn't necessarily like a certain product if i can say that the end goal is to uplift women so in every aspect like um last year we hosted an event that um so entry was uh, sanitary towels, right? So we were hosting a pad drive, essentially. Um, this year, I've started a production company. I've had the pleasure of hiring four ladies, four students who really could use the money, you know, to just do whatever it is that they need to do with the money. But um, essentially, my end goal is to uplift and improve the quality of women's lives. And that's literally in every aspect of Bupilo, like literally every aspect of their lives. Yeah, that's so yeah. dope. It's, it's, all, it's basically trying to pay it forward. Um, you've obviously gotten some opportunities yes. in your life and being able to then pass the baton over to other, other ladies who need that same assistance. And that's kind of the conversation that we're trying to have here on She Social as well, where um, I'm having obviously the chats with you as well as with Kim Jade and trying to understand the full scope of where women in South Africa are kind of going because we need to work with each other to be able to empower each other as well to kind of take things to the next level because if we don't carry each other, it will always be a man's world. And that's what's so important about having these conversations as well. Um, can you give us a bit of a brief background behind the unicorn, the color hair, the vibes? Because, you know, some people might look at you and be like, hey, <laughs> But obviously, within the entertainment space, it's, it's, it's interesting and it's colorful. So it's something that you've kind of also decided to kind of stick towards. Um, give us an idea as to what's going on. Yo, so listen, I've been called a Chakrahan. I've been <laughs> called a Bram Chap Lord. I've been called <laughs> all of these things. Because I like to express myself and I'm not going to always have the opportunity to be this expressive, you know. I mean, actually, no, I take that back. I will because you define your own life and I will have the opportunity to be this person until until. But um, I'm just naturally a very bubbly person and it comes out through like my nails. It comes okay. out through my hair. It comes out through my outfits. It's just like, and I really just love pastel colors. So I think... I did one big gig for a brand and then my friend took a picture of me and then she literally tagged it. She was like, oh, my unicorn. And it just stuck. And people are always just like, oh, my gosh, yes. Like, unicorn, there we go. You know? So I also liked it because, I mean, a unicorn is a, is a rare, magical, somewhat mysterious creature, you know, like, if you hear what I mean. And there's, there's always a certain level of intrigue because... Um, I am not like, I'm not like anyone else in the industry. I'd like to think, you know, there's something special that I bring, which I think has also helped to propel me to where I am currently because gay idea special, you know, you can't get it anywhere else. And that's why the unicorn, that's why that stuck. So it was a nickname that was given to me, but it made so much sense. It stuck. A hundred percent. And it's nice to also kind of have a bit of an alias as well, because I mean, you're DJ Adila, but then, you know, sometimes people have this, this, this stage persona, you know how Beyonce has such a fear. So you get on stage and you are the unicorn. DJ Adela is going to come and rock. And then when you go home, then you can still be yourself. <laughs> Which is... <Yeah>. Awesome. <laughs> when I come home, you know, I can take off the wig and just, hey! you know, relax. <laughs> you can take off the color. You can take off the hair. You can do everything. It's like, whoo, let me just be my normal self while I'm doing it. <laughs> Being a unicorn is a lot of work, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yo, they don't understand. If I can tell you what it took for me to get this hair under lockdown, yeah, yo, people don't, people don't understand what it, guys, it takes a lot of work to be a unicorn. It takes yo, a lot of work yo, yo. to put on the outfit. It takes a lot of work for people, oh. well, for women in general to kind of put on the, 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 the performance outfit because when I say performance outfit I mean everything from the the clothes to the hair to the nails to the makeup it's a lot of investments that we put into our work and um, do you find that um, you have to search a little bit harder for you to try and be extraordinary every time you're putting together something for yourself with the way that you look as well as even with some of the music that you have to find that's such a, a a scary question in the sense that i was thinking about that literally just the other day and i'm very like basic when it comes to my makeup like i love a basic basic look because i believe Rabatle, as we are you know and i mean i'll visit the lashes and i'll visit the nails and because i mean who we're all we, we all love to play with makeup from time to time you know but um 
I, I really had a deep conversation with myself and I was like, okay, so the girls are putting on the nails and they're putting on the hair and they're putting on the lashes, like, and you are just here, either you, you've shaved your head or, you know, like, like, I'm just, I'm a crazy person where my image is concerned. So it's something that I really did think about for the longest time. And I've just realized that, um, authenticity is key. So whatever you love and what, how, how you like to look is what makes you stand out. It's what gives you that extra thing, you know? And it just gave me comfort in being myself. And like I said, I think that's one of the things that has gotten me to this level was just staying true to who I am, you know? And where the music is involved, definitely, 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 definitely. Like where the music is involved, Noni, if you want to be a great DJ, you will always fight. Yeah. You will always fight. You will always fight. So I love to like one up my previous set you know even if that means i'm taking time off the day to just like dedicate time to digging for music and finding dope music like i'll do that i'll definitely so they Muhammad Ali, you know they like I, I don't take prisoners but um where my image is concerned honestly like i can go to a gig barefaced and you know just looking cute overall in general i think if you feel comfortable and you you, you think you look cute then you are cute that's the energy that you're channeling and that's what people are going to feed off of you know yeah so that's just yeah that's my perspective on things that's so awesome, man. And I think also just kind of understanding your holistic brand and where you want to kind of take things is very important because it, you need to kind of channel it into a certain direction. Um, and that also kind of speaks to how you stylize your name because, I mean, spelling the word Adila, but then instead of having the A, you'd rather put an X there. Can you yeah. explain what that's about as well? Oh, my gosh. Like, I hate that everything you've asked me has been a fluke. That's just a word. <laughs> So remember when Twitter was still like growing, it hadn't like gotten traction yet. And I wanted my name. I always knew, like I've always been a fan of my name, like a shout out to my mom and my dad. But um, literally I wanted to be a dealer on Twitter. So can mm -hmm. type by A D I W L A H username already taken and it's some inactive person. I'm just like, no ways. Mm -hmm. That's so I went, yo, yo, yo. So I was like, okay, let me relax. Let me not get a Twitter account just yet because I need to figure out how I'm going to get like my name. And then there was this really cool um, trend that was, the Tumblr kids will remember, there was a really cool trend where people were swapping their A's for V's and, you know, we were taking out letters and inserting numbers that looked like the letters. You, like it was just a craze. And I was like, okay, no, what's the king? X, yeah. Yes. We're going to be a dealer with an X, you know? And then someone even teased me. Someone was like, why are you always trying to solve for X? I was like, that's it though. Like, cause I was, I said to my friend, I was like, show me how, but like, how do we make it happen? I don't want an underscore. I don't want a dot, like, you know, and we need to find a way to make it happen. And my friend literally said to me, why must you always solve for X? I was like, that's it, that's it. Yeah, X. <laughs> <laughs> but things happen for a reason and look now you know it's gotten you to a position where people obviously uh, remember that because that's something where it's like okay you need to intentionally understand when you're typing out you need to put the x and not the a otherwise you're going to get the wrong handle and hence you now have it the way that you stylized it and i think it works because it also speaks to you being a unicorn it speaks to you trying to be different with the music it speaks to just everything about you being extraordinary extra uh, that's true and thank you hey, for extra like i love to tell people guys i'm part east african hey there's always masala here there's always spice for extra for extra you know yeah. and in the in all of the right ways <laughs> in all of the right ways in all of the right ways indeed um all right so we've seen your your, your brand kind of grow with regards to you being featured on uh, different TV shows. I mean, you were on Lockdown House Party, which was recently now uh, during the lockdown. I obviously featured you on my radio show as well. You've been doing a lot of um, really awesome, um, I don't know, well, DJ sets in very great platforms. What else can we expect from you as a DJ and where do you kind of see your brand going in the next 18 months? The next 18 months, um, I'm definitely working on a song. I'm just struggling to, I'm going to be very open. I'm just struggling to find the right person because I have such great respect for so many people in this industry. So I'm really like, my beat is ready. Everything is ready. Like I'm just 
honestly struggling to figure out like who I want on this song. Um, definitely doing YouTube, definitely doing YouTube, but um, more from a production perspective. So what I want to do is I want to host like a content hub that I'm currently building. And um, basically I just want all of the girlies who want a, like space for their, whatever it is that they're doing that can live on YouTube or Mixcloud. Um, they can come through and we'll host them for free. Definitely. Um, trying to employ more people like I, I don't know how god still needs to guide me as to how i'm gonna do that but um i'm trying to employ more people like more people like i'm trying to be a powerhouse like i turned 25 this year so Woo! i hear your question yeah the next 18 months but i'm thinking the next five years you know so i'm really trying to make a significant impact personally and like where other people are concerned within the next five years and it's just talk okay, i'm such a driven and dedicated person like i wouldn't put it past myself to achieve my five-year plans within the next 18 months like it, it could happen it could happen and then you'll, I just, mean, you'll just set some more goals when you're done yes Yes, what's up? Give us a take over here, the girlies, the unicorn girls, but then we understand that. <laughs> we really, I really just want to like uplift and grow the community because it's something that we need. Unfortunately, we've put um, so much trust in society, and time and time again, I feel like we haven't grown as a group. They have, there have been changes, you know, but we, we need to be the change we want to see. Definitely. A hundred percent. All right. Thank you so much for your time, Adila. I really enjoyed the conversation and we definitely will be watching and supporting you all the way through with all of your endeavors, as well as the platforms that you're going to be creating for women, because the more platforms we have, the more we can take over this industry and it won't be considered male dominated anymore because we'll have more females who are in the space who are dominating. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Like, kupa, kupa, just as a last thing right to whoever's watching this podcast you know whoever's tuned in and vibing with us right now the one thing i want to say is please don't female as please don't female as you know do not female as we are creatives doing what creatives do and um we are pro women yes always but do not do not label us as females because I, I own a female accountant, le female doctor, le female, you know, it's just a doctor, an accountant, a pilot. Do you get what I mean? So now we are creatives by all intents and purposes. Yes. I love that so much because you are taking back the power for the women and saying we are just as equal and we are just as able and we're just as powerful as the men are. I love that so much. Where can people follow you on social media before we wrap up? Um, people can find me everywhere. Literally, A-D-I-L-L-X-H. Guys, Adila. Please, it's A-D-I-L-L-X-H on literally across all social media platforms. <laughs> Nice. Solving for X all the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Thank you so much, Adila. I really enjoyed the conversation. And of course, like I said, we'll be watching and supporting you from the sidelines. It's been really awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. All right, cheers. Thank you so much to Adila for joining us on the She Social podcast today. As you can see, she's funky, she's funky, she's out there. She's trying to make sure that you can hear her and how different she is. And she's just doing that in her own expressive way, through her clothes, through her hair, through her music, and just trying to make sure that she's extraordinary all the time. All right, so with that, we're going to get into our second conversation for today with Miss Kim Jade. And uh, a big thank you to my second guest who is joining me on the conversation today. Just want to give a big welcome to Kim J. Hey, doll. Oh man, it's good to have you. It's good to see you. It's good to have this chat um, today as well here on the She Social podcast. I love always interacting with you, even when I see you in person, because you're always so bubbly. You're always so happy. <laughs> and you're always so like in a great mood. Do you ever get into a bad mood, Kim? Because I feel like you're always just like looking on the positive. Like, on the look, all of us, all of us now are super excited when we see each other because we've missed each other. Like, I was like, oh my gosh, so good. Even I saw you on Saturday. I was like, oh, it's so good to see you. Even though we didn't chat. 
seeing you in person, how can you not be happy? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, all right, so Kim, we just, I just wanted to have a conversation with you just about yourself, the things that you've worked on. And of course, it's just always so awesome to see people's growth within the entertainment space, especially mm. females. Just for, uh, for a lot of women to kind of look back and say, wow, Kim did it. So there's definitely a space for a lot of people to get in as well. Um, you're mm. originally from Zimbabwe, but then you, ca you came to South Africa, obviously, for for work and the bright lights and, and all the good things that come <laughs> with being in Johannesburg. Um, but yeah. you know, one thing I love about you is that you're always so loud and proud about being from Zim. And especially mm. in weird times that we're in right now, um, especially mm. with Zimbabwean Lives Matter and, and xenophobic attacks and the likes of, um, how was it feeling for you to be in South Africa, being in this time and still being able to be loud and proudly from Zim? Yeah, I mean, the truth, that, first of all, thank you for all those amazing things you said. I really appreciate it. And from another female young woman of color, you know, it's so nice to hear because we really do need to uplift each other more and celebrate each other more. So thank you. And thank you for having me on. Um, I, I'll be honest, when everything started happening, happening with Zimbabwe, I felt tremendous uh, guilt, if that makes any sense, because I was here living this comfortable, amazing life. But people my age that are in Zimbabwe speaking out about what's going on politically are getting abducted from their homes and thrown in jail. So, you know, you can't not feel like bad. I felt like, what am I doing to give back? What am I doing to change things? And I mean, I was one of the first, I was quoted, sorry, I'm just trying to, here we go. <laughs> um, a lot of people that were reporting on what was going on said that I was one of the first Zimbabwean celebrities to, to actually open up and talk about what was going back home, on back home because people were genuinely afraid for their lives if they speak out and talk about what's going on. And I couldn't keep quiet. I read one article where a doctor had leaked a photo in a hospital of seven little babies that had been born that night, all dead bodies wrapped in blankets, just to raise awareness about how bad the medical condition is because somebody got the tender to do you know all the all the supply all the medical supplies supply and um, ppe for covid supply all that and that money was just mysteriously disappeared and that has led to the loss of thousands of lives and i couldn't keep quiet so i've tried to use my platform to raise awareness about what's going on because zimbabwe is just over the border from south africa but people don't know what's going on yeah. which is really sad and really scary we know about all the black lives matters movement overseas we know about one guy that lost his life in america you know, yeah, due to police brutality, but we don't know what's going on across our own border, which yeah. I think is shocking. I mean, the truth of the matter is, as Africans, we really don't know that much about what's going on in other countries. Mm -hmm. And so I try to use my platform and my voice to just let people know about what's going on in Zim, and hopefully mm -hmm. I'm doing a decent job. Mm -hmm. I think you definitely are doing a decent job because, like I mentioned, because you're so loud and proud, it's great for people who know that you're Zimbabwean to be able to look to you for that type of information because um, as much as we might not know what's actually happening uh, across the borders, it's also just availability of information. We might not That's be sure. getting the right media who is give, giving the coverage to stories like that. And uh, we can obviously then look back and say, well, Kim's from Zimbabwe, so surely she might be on the ground or you might be able to have information because maybe you have family yeah. members who've sent you information that we can then look to. So I think you've definitely done a, a uh, a decent enough job for us to be able to get information as to what's happening so that we can also see how mm -hmm. we can assist or maybe even um, just show support in, in, in the cause at the moment, mm -hmm. you know, so it's really mm -hmm. great. Um, but speaking to the yeah. fact that you, you are from Zim, um, when you moved to Johannesburg, firstly, how young were you when you came to South Africa? And um, how was the, 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 the culture change for you when coming to Johannesburg to obviously um, go for this big dream of being an entertainer? Well, I actually moved to South Africa in order to get my degree. I got my honors in social work and psychology from the University of Stellenbosch. So my, I first actually lived in the Western Cape. And then from studying, I moved to Cape Town, became a full-time model for a couple of years. And then from there, took the leap to come to Johannesburg to chase the dreams of entertainment and what, what. <laughs> um, as, as much as a culture shock, it really wasn't. Because in Cape Town, I was managing a club called Jade at the time 
no longer yeah. but um because i was hosting in the club you knew all the rappers you knew all the djs and you kind of were familiar with the scene and coming to joba could help because you know when i eventually got the job with mtv i could call on this person and be like oh i know this person oh my gosh i know this person and it kind of helped make the interviewing process a lot easier yeah. but when i first got to joba no one would actually represent me no management or talent companies would take me on because they didn't know who i was um unlike a lot of you guys i was brand new on the scene i wasn't like a child star i wasn't you know in any soapies or anything so people were like mm, we don't know who you are we don't mess with that yeah. and so i kind of rocked it for a couple of months on my own and just attended every event i could <laughs> i attended every event and i posted at every event like i was somebody you know <laughs> in time i was broke at home but i was like people are going to know who i am and thanks to that melanie trichard who was the talent manager at viacom at the time she saw me on instagram and she slid in the dms and was like hey mtv is looking for new talent are you keen to come in for a screen test and i was just like i love the story because i want to show people that the power of social media and how important it really really is because they discovered me on instagram that changed my whole life and it's only because my insta was popping so don't sleep on your social media <laughs> 100% man and i think especially now that we're in 2020 we're in a digital age i mean we're having an interview on yeah. Zoom and not necessarily yeah. a person um that also kind of speaks to where um the world is kind of moving itself and not necessarily Completely. sticking to one not sticking to one platform for us to be able to have conversations um but obviously moving into a space like viacom an international brand like mtv um has done wonders for you because it's it's firstly made you um I don't know what's the word um I think it's um people have kind of gotten involved with your brand people have gotten to know who you are sure. as a person we've understood you as a presenter and uh, being able to have opportunities to even go ab abroad and and interview really awesome people um into yeah. how's that experience been because I know a lot of people always have this big dream of I want my job to take me overseas but I don't know if it's going to be able to happen and you got <laughs> that purely because you make sure that you present yourself well enough for someone to see you and say this person has got the spunk and's got the talent let's take the chance with her and of course then take it to the world completely i mean even when you do get the job it's not like oh i got the job and now everything's going to come to me there were five other presenters six other presenters on the channel so even once you're there it doesn't mean you're guaranteed the international trips i was just always that person that went over and above when i was at channel every event i was working every emceeing job continuing to push social media and just creating um a strong brand which is a buzzword nowadays everyone talks about brand but it really is your brand and your identity and with that the brands that then sponsored these international trips were like kim is the one we want and so that took me around the world and it was extremely humbling and amazing and you learn a lot when you travel yes. you know i think in africa and sa and zim we really really babied and protected and when you go out there you're like yo this is real <laughs> like when i went to america for the first time it's super white like people don't tell you like america is really white and you feel your color things like that mm -hmm. it makes me appreciate home but i learned a lot from it and ever since then i mean I, it's been a couple months since i left mtv i'm now running my own production company and taking all of the skills that i've learned and adding my voice and my experience to this space and hopefully contributing to the industry in a way that shows young women of color that not only can you be talent but you can be the one behind the camera directing and calling the shots and providing employment for other young black creatives so yes, i think that's really important I did want to chat to you a little bit about your production company but we're going to get into that in a moment. I did want oh, yeah. to find out I did want to find out though obviously being uh, on a space like MTV I mean you've gotten your chance like I mentioned to to travel and go to the states. Who's mm. been who's been one of the hardest interviews that you've actually had to conduct especially working because when you're representing a <laughs> like MTV no matter how hard the interview you still have to be professional because that's your job. Oh, yeah. that. <laughs> So which was maybe one of the most difficult that you've had to conduct? I think definitely Naomi Campbell. Simply really? because yeah honey, ah go girl has interviewed a lot of people. <laughs> um I interviewed Naomi Campbell but we got the call the morning of. So normally we get enough time to prepare, do adequate research and just know your shit going in and the call was like maybe 2 hours before they were about to announce Global Citizen to South Africa and to the world and that they were bringing this major concert and they were like she's only going to do two interviews that day. And mine was the second one straight after the announcement. And I went in and there's like 
gang people in the room. It's just very intimidating. She has an energy and a, a presence about her that is like, I am the Naomi and you're gonna yeah. know. And she was one of those that if you say something on camp, she'll correct you. So I said something about her working with a specific charity for this many years. And she's like, actually, it's this many years. And you're like, oh, okay. We're going to pick it up and carry on. We're going to keep the energy going. No, no, no. But it was one of those, when I walked out of them, I just burst out crying. Like I just sat with one of the greatest models in history. And it's, it's something you never, ever, you don't even dream about it because it's like, that, is that ever going to be a rea reality? So that was very humbling. It was a really great learning experience. <laughs> Imagine yeah. the learning, I can imagine the learning experience because you obviously go back and you critique yourself and you're like, oh my goodness, yeah. I, did that day, I did that, I screwed I'm up. A perfectionist. I'm a perfe and I pride myself in really being good at what I do and coming prepared to every single job. And that was just like, a, mm. oh, but no. it's a, I can say I Campbell. <laughs> I did save it at the end. So it was, we saved it and it was great, but <laughs> that was the learning experience. I think that's the hardest part at the end of the day. The hardest part is always being able to come back from such a fumble because not a lot of mm. people have that skill. Not a lot of people are able to come back from saying, okay, I've been put into a corner. How do I get myself back so that it doesn't necessarily yeah. ruffle any feathers? So shout out to, to, to still be able to fix that at the end of the day because <laughs> I think it's an opportunity, you know, it's one of those where you either make it or you don't. So, uh, yeah, yeah. but um, learning from it, I think is one really, really awesome experience experience speaking mm. about learning learning about um things on the job you did mention that you've now started your own production company having yes. this viacom can you give us just a brief background behind what your production company does um especially mm. with the aid of um pushing forward females and females um being in the space of of the production space and, and working in entertainment for sure my love i mean i'm sure you can 100 percent relate when you walk on set and everyone around you is a man and the first thing that I became hypersensitive was to was when they're micing you, when they put a lapel mic on, it's in your breast area. Yes. It's very sensitive and it's very intimate. And now this complete stranger is now in this very intimate space. And I was like, why isn't there a single woman on set to be able to at least offer to do this? Like, okay, that's a woman. We can't be in her space like this. Mm -hmm. It was something that sounds so small that we often don't even think about. But I, I became hyper aware of it. And every set I was on, I was noticing the guy calling the shots, man. Person behind the camera, man. Sound engineer, man. The ultimate boss that once in a while checks in on how things are going, also a man. And I got more and more frustrated in that. I'm like, why aren't there more women in these spaces? Because let's be honest, a lot of the TV we watch, all the content we watch now, a lot of our DJs, we're females. Yeah. You're paying us to be talent, but we're not calling the shots. Mm -hmm. And I got more and more frustrated with that because I understand that being a content creator for however many years now, I get it. I get what brands want. I get what viewers want. And I thought with all my knowledge and expertise, why am I not using it? So when I walked away from MTV, I decided to put all my effort and time into KJ Productions, which was registered in November 2019. And what we aim to do is to be able, yes, registered, so text can come for us. <laughs> no, no, um, that's to come for you. It's a real thing. Hey, taxes, so they'll come for you. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, I get to be able to hire young creatives that, that get it and that are, have a fresh eye and are hungry and talented that would never otherwise get the jobs. Mm -hmm. So we've been really lucky. We've had clients like Standard Bank, Nespresso, Asus. We've shot for Nasty C, uh, Essence Festival in America. We've been doing some really, really amazing things and we're yeah. not even a year old yet. So I just, yeah, it's been really amazing. It's been a great That's learning so learning experience. That's so great, man. Um, where can women who want to be involved in your production company kind of find you or maybe even get opportunities? Maybe not now, but I mean, obviously when the time is right for them to intern or maybe even get an opportunity to see how they can advance their skills a little bit, whether it be in sound engineering mm -hmm. or being um, a DOP or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. So I think that the greatest thing for us is social media. We're on every single social media platform. So just search KJ productions our insta handle is there twitter everything and our email address is there so it's it's a matter of just reaching out like you said right now we can't take on internships because as you know crews are as small and tight as possible in order to adhere to the regulations uh 
from the government, yeah. but hopefully 2021 we'll be able to take on internships where these young creatives, young people that are still studying can come on, even if it's just to be on one set to see how things really are, because you can read all the books and study all you like, but it's a completely different beast when you're out there shooting live and it's at a festival or it's on stage. Like it's, it's yeah. Yeah. So 2021, we want to be open to internships for young people of color. Yes, that's so awesome, man. And I love that. I love the fact that you're, you're taking the power that you have to be able to empower other women and, you know, kind of making sure that the, the, the females in the industry kind of grow in different spheres and not necessarily yeah. only in front of the camera. Because like you mentioned, we're not only just pretty, we can do <laughs> plenty other things. And those, right, those skills need to be developed 100% of the time as well. So shout outs to you for that. Um, within mm -hmm. your being able to leave MTV, um, you've obviously taken, a, a, taken a, a bit of a leap to say, okay, I'm going to leave this platform that's given me um, a bit of a presence and I'm now going to then plow everything back into my own thing. You're still an influencer and a content creator, but how was that move and that adjustment for you as a brand? Because I know making a, a tough decision like that isn't easy. Mm. It really was very difficult because you get used to a consistent income every single month. But the truth of the matter is I have been a content creator for years before MTV and my social media had been earning me so much more money than I actually was earning on air, to be very honest with you. And so it wasn't a shock for my followers or the people that I've been working with. It felt like an organic transition. I also think there's only, there's only so much you can do in a specific company or with a specific, um, like a, a channel. You know, there's only so many award shows you can do red carpets you can do and I wanted to be challenged and I wanted to grow and also by me leaving it creates a space for another young presenter to be able to come in and learn and take those amazing opportunities and grow for themselves you know you can't be selfish and hold on to a space forever when you're blocking a, another person from coming and growing mm. so I really think when I was there I was a sponge and I took in everything I sat in marketing meetings i sat in event plan meetings i was with the directors and i was with the editors and i was taking in as much as i could and now i got all the education and information and i'm spreading my wings and flying and they completely supported it when i was like you know thank you so much i think it's time to move on they were like we 100 percent get it you know shine and so it's, it's great to know that you still have that amazing relationship. Yeah, that's great to kind of keep a relationship like that because the one thing you don't want to yeah. do is to burn bridges, especially in this industry. Yeah. Because you want to be able to still be able to create content and then even broadcast it on a Viacom channel where it doesn't necessarily yeah. have to kind of block you off in, the, in that regard. So uh, shout outs to you yeah. for thinking outside the box and also taking that chance, especially so early because I think a lot of people also get too scared where they hold on and they're like, okay, well, I can't leave. I have to stay here. I have to stay here. And you were like, look yeah. if this doesn't happen now then it's never going to happen so i'm going to kind of take yeah. that. um and um yes with you i also just wanted to find out also how um your production company or productions have been growing especially during this time because lockdown's been very difficult for a lot of businesses it's also been difficult for a lot of um artists and creators especially mm -hmm. in this time because mm -hmm. a lot of our opportunities have to happen outside and being told to stay indoors yeah blocks all of that sure. now you've left Viacom sure. you've created your own thing and now it's like okay now I need to stop <laughs> how did that affect your yeah. business look the travel definitely was blocked so any international trips we had were cancelled we were supposed to do Essence Fest again this year with Nasty CMM we couldn't go but um I found COVID and lockdown to kind of be a blessing for a content creator because as much as we phys physically couldn't be out with each other it forced us to reach out and collaborate just like you and I are doing right now mm -hmm. and so instead of being blocked by borders and countries the whole world opened up and you can create reach out to a content creator that's overseas and be like I'm doing a vlog on this send me your takes and we would cut together videos and that's kind of how my first uh, series online uh, surviving lockdown went every single week was a different episode. It's food, it's fashion, it's talking about boys. It's like, you know, so if you were a content creator and you were doing nothing during lockdown, you really slept on yourself because as much as the brands weren't spending money and weren't paying for campaigns for a couple of months, they were still watching to see who was being active, who was creating, who was collaborating. And I think that's why, thank God, I am so busy now work-wise because I never stopped. From yeah. week one, I've been doing live interviews. I'd created content. I've been putting out vlogs and doing photo shoots because we actually did have special permits to be able to shoot. 
So I've done an entire ASUS campaign, which is going to be in stores, billboards, and online, which wow. my company created and did. Praise God. Because um, <laughs> I was the face of the brand. But we're like, yeah, she's the face of the brand, but she has a, a production company. Let her production house create all the content. Nice. So there were, there were permits you could have to hire out studios, hire your crew. Everything had to be super small. But I just think it really was the time for the creatives. It's like, oh, you like to create content? Prove it. We've right. got all these restrictions, but you have your gear, you have your health, you have Wi-Fi, nothing should stop you. Exactly. So I think the people that work with the creative could still make it happen. A hundred percent. And exactly that's what is that's exactly what she social podcast is about as well, because we yeah. also wanted to still have the conversations and makes a create a platform for females. And of course, we're using Zoom, we're using the internet, we're making sure yeah. that the conversations are happening. And that's what's so important about this time is thinking outside the box. And I think that's the conversation I've also just been trying to prove to people is that you don't necessarily have to sit back and think, Oh, my world is ending. You know, mm. you can also just mm. think, okay, what else can I do for myself to kind of take things yeah. a little bit further? Um, so shout out to you for constantly thinking outside the box. I think that's the one thing I've always appreciated about you, Kim, is that you've never let anything kind of hold you back. You're like, okay, well, I can do that too. Okay, I'm going to do that too. I'm gonna do that too. You need me? Don't worry, I'll do that. <laughs> like all the things I'm there, I'll make it happen. <laughs> All right. Um, so just to kind of close off, Kim, um, it's been really awesome kind of hearing a little bit more about you and your production company and your brand. What else can we look forward to from Kim Jade and as well as KJ Productions? Sure. Look, I'm not stopping. I think I'm going to continue to work my butt off and continue to push every boundary that people have put on me and, and on us young women and African women in particular. It's always the, oh, shame. Like, it's a sad story. Oh, shame. She's from Zimbabwe. Oh, the <laughs> politics. Oh, I'm like, actually, no. no. Super proud of where I come from. I'm a hard worker and I'm going to hustle and keep pushing. KJ Productions has not now gone into curating intimate experiences. So we took a, a group of young Instagrammers out to an organic wine farm, an organic um, fruit farm. And we invited a whole bunch of designers so, and we had photographers. So people are collaborating and creating content. Then we had a roundtable discussion about the real experiences that us women go through, whether it be surviving rape, whether it be um, prejudice in the workplace, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was just the first of many um, experiences I'd like to curate. Um, because we go through a million, we go to a million different events and they all feel the same. Yes. And nothing. And I'm like, actually, if we have this much power control and have a network that we have, why not not do something that actually means something where you leave that event? Like that was amazing. Yeah. I learned so much. I met this person. I grew this way. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's the space we're going to be playing in as well. So yeah, world domination. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kim. I can't wait for my invites for the next one. Yes, but, uh, the next one is <laughs> um, but like I said, I'm constantly in awe of your work. I'm constantly in awe of your work ethic. And um, I think you need to keep on pushing, man. Keep on pushing the female voice forward because that's what we're about as well. And um, yeah, man, it's great to see you grow and we're going to be uh, supporting you through and through. Thank you so much for your time and your effort and everything that you're putting into yourself as well. Thank you. And a congratulations to you for creating a platform for young women to just be able to be like, yo, she did it. Cosmo did it. I can do it. So yes. you're constantly providing inspiration and proof that it can be done. And and the fact that you've had such longevity in this career that's heavily male dominated speaks to your talent and speaks to your drive. So don't stop. Oh, thank you so much, Kim. Really appreciate you. Thank you. <laughs> Love thank you lots. God bless. Love you. <laughs> and there you have it. That brings us to the end of today's episode of She Social Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me again. A big thank you to my guests for today, DJ Adila, as well as Kim Jade. They are both fired up and they're both uh, willing to do what it takes to get their brands to the next step so i think that's something to kind of take away from the conversations for today continue to like continue to comment continue to let me know exactly what you love about the she social podcast and who else you'd like me to feature we'll be back again next week right here on my youtube page make sure that you join us again next week wednesday